Um, Xinyue Yi is a professor at Texas A&M University, and you also may know him from New Jersey Institute of Technology in Kent State. He's been in a bunch of great places. And today he will talk about geovisuals from POIs to semantic data points. Okay, Koyo, thank you for organizing this wonderful uh, symposium. And uh, I'm with both uh, urban planning and uh, geography in a and Today, I will talk about uh, how our research group is working on the POI. So, in our view, the POI, you mainly look at it from two perspectives. Uh, from the physical perspective, POI is a specific uh, point location, which is mainly used for the modern automotive navigation system. So, it, uh, however, if we look at uh, uh, this uh, same definition from Wikipedia. If we look at uh, what's uh, someone in the definition, what is useful or interesting? Something interesting to me might not be interesting to someone else. So that's the reason we come up a term called a semantic data points. For that is we argue is if we want enrich the point of interest. Uh, in addition to the geographic locations, we also need to associate it with semantic narratives and visual views. Uh, to, uh, some months ago, uh, there was an interesting interview with Edward Grazia, a very famous economist in uh, Harvard University, because uh, he is a big promoter for large cities. But nowadays, you know, the cities, especially the large cities, are very vulnerable to COVID-19. So when he was interviewed for the reason, he said, oh, that's because in uh, large cities, usually we have the concentrated poverty. So why I mentioned the, how the concentrated poverty is relevant to the point of interest topic, if you look at any map, uh, most of the uh, in in the point of interest, usually were not in, are in the uh, well developed regions, in the, in some large uh, lag, I mean underdeveloped areas. There's very few point of interest because no one will go there. So, however, these uh, in these kind of the underdeveloped regions, you will see many like uh, under uh, understandard and understandize the housing or dirty water or trash, uh, <clears throat> that animal, all these will be interesting to the public health professional, but will not be interesting to any Yelp or any kind of restaurants comments there. So where are these missed point of interest or something the society is not interested in? So the, for the uh, if we can join the semantic and the visual information as well as our trip, because when we talk about the point of interest, it's not our home address. That's somewhere we visit. So by nature, point of interest is linked to our trajectories. So for the SDPs, we at least we can carry out the following four tasks. And first, we can perform both the location based and the trajectory based. So trajectory based, they will allow us to link multiple points of interest together. And we need to process these massive hybrid data. So you can treat the SDPs as a basic units. Then we can consider it will be a spatial multimedia data set. The reason is it will not only has a traditional GIS data sets, it will have a video data, image data, uh, the all kinds of different narratives. So it also allow us to facilitate the spatial aggregation, because for uh, as May pointed out in the chat, is we definitely we can aggregate the point of interest, aggregate them to for a more uh, then related it to the other data at the same spatial scales. So we can also do the comparative analysis because you will always find some place are very similar for some reason. So that is because these multiple attributes associated with geography location will make you have 
have this kind of feeling. So just from more common needs, why we need a point of interest? Uh, sometimes point of interest allow us to navigate easily, navigate to some place without the type of exact street edges. But even from the human nature, like what we really want is some is we want to find and analyze the critical locations based on their visual appearance and spatial semantics. Uh, that's like uh, when I, uh, my, my young daughter come to me, she would describe that she want to grab me to somewhere she's interested, in, but for sure she do not know where the point of interest is. She will only describe what it looks like. And because if we know the point of interest better, it's also facilitated our way of arranging the events. For example, when I was previously in New Jersey Institute of Technology, we are very close to downtown. So be, other people warn me is in the morning time, it's easier for you to walk towards downtown, but in the evening, try to avoid a certain streets. So it will help me if you can contextualize these kind of POIs. So I will be more aware when and where I should go. But for a while, is how we get this kind of data. And uh, for um, for many years, people use this very large kind of cam uh, this kind of recorder, but it's too too heavy for you to carry along. Now we have the cell cell phone. Cell phone has a uh, uh, lots of storage now for us to take the video. In addition, for those people who are interested in the extreme uh, kind of the uh, sports, and there's many kind of uh, thing available. Uh, so you can take the video with you when you do all these kind of exercise and in the law enforcement. And we also have this kind of the body camera. So, so in other words, what happened is you will have something relevant to location or you see point of interest along with the video, plus some commentary, is because you took the video, but you also want to see something. Uh, you recording your feeling, so then later you can come back to refresh your memory. So the, we have practiced something is before is use uh, this kind of the uh, cameras with the GPS and drive into the a very shabby neighborhoods to take videos and look at how people describe certain locations. For example, these local stores, some abandoned those old school sites. For sure, you will not see too many comments about them in any year or any kind of thing because they are abandoned. However, that's, there's lots of problems of crimes associated to these places. Only police or people who are familiar with the neighbor, they will know what's going on. So we invite them to go the trip, go to the trip with us. Then this text will be linked to the specific location. So we will create some point of interest, relevant and interesting to the local uh, communities. To do that is we use, uh, uh, this is we call uh, Tool called Geo Visuals, we develop an open source tool that is for these spatial, what we call SDTs. Now it becomes a basic uh, analytical unit. For that, its trajectory will be composed of many SDTs. A definite streets and regions you will contain multiple SDT. So, in other words, you, if you can see the street or region as a human being, and an SDB. Is like your attributes or like your expertise. So we use that to explain what's going, what's our urban environment. And definitely because the SDB is associated with multimedia data, it will allow us to do many video analysis, semantic or sentiment analysis. Definitely put it on the map. And so it, it, it will become a highly uh, interactive interface allow us to integrate the heterogeneous data sets to better understand the urban environment. Especially, it will allow us to look at how different people view the, uh, the same location differently. At a different time, or same person will have a different feeling 
uh, at a different time in the same location. To, to make it easier and faster, we, we develop, uh, also develop the apps in both iPhone and Android. Allow, we, we ask, uh, it's free for download if you search two visuals in the, uh, in the store. It's free for download and you can do the recording and uh, you use the you, you talk and this will later will turn in your voice, it will be turned into text. So to, uh, associated with uh, locations. And uh, furthermore, we also develop this beautiful interface, allow this kind of data, trajectory data with uh, uh, narratives, with uh, uh, image, video images, to link it with a map, link it as a web map. So it will, so then we can have the videos, the photos, the audio, and the text over region the locations. So this is a kind of the interface. Uh, well, let me explain what it is. If you look at the A here, see here, here is a many trips. So we, we do the recording of the each trip we went through in a kind of the uh, uh, city. So then there is a, uh, if I click one of the trip, then this corresponding trip will be highlighted in yellow in the interface B. All the other bluish uh, ones are the trips we made, but only this kind of uh, yellowish is uh, were the trip four, which is uh, highlighted. And you might notice the trip four, we have 20, 24. Here it means in, 20, in trip four, we have 24 semantic data points. Then you might wonder is how did you define semantic data points? Uh, or if you look into the Google map, maybe there's only two point of interest in the, the trip I made, but this 24 is from the person who took the trip. If he or she stopped somewhere saying, hey, there's a place I'm interested, I will talk about this place, then it will become automatically become a semantic data point. So the 24 there, if you, it's a green dot, if you click that, you will see the narrative and the picture relevant to that. In the C here, you will see all these uh, corresponding uh, uh, semantic data points and their descriptions. The D is, uh, you could definitely, we can pick up some place to view and you based on the uh, keywords we type here because all these keywords retrieved from the trip, then you will say, okay, I want to see some uh, trips relevant to campus or school, then these will be brought up. So further is we use this to develop three different tools, uh, semantic study, sentiment study, keyword uh, trees. Let's show you the semen, sentiment study first of sentiments. Again, these are the, is a unit of, well, let's use a unit analysis here as a street. Definitely you can change it to region. We will talk about later. For streets, so these are now the streets are colored by your sentiment from the party to the negative. So where you think the party where the negative uh, feeling of the uh, streets and these streets negative party is very much based on the point of interest where people express their feelings. So the party is green and more green, the more party, more light, light green towards neutral. Uh, then the, yeah, so the yellowish here is more yellowish, is more negative. So we can also click any of that and we'll say, oh yeah, that's a, a location where, where people talk about what they are talking about. And interestingly, we also see people's sentiment change over time, right? O over time. Uh, so you will see uh, people's attitudes or sentiment towards a location will change over time. We can even bring different, the same trip made by different people, we can put it side by side to compare. And uh, as I mentioned, we can also do semantic study. Uh, for semantic study, we, we build these kind of uh, polygons. So, so these are definitely, you can uh, change the size of the, this kind of a region. And for that is if we select several of them and you will immediately find out they are captured, their similarity in their semantics. 
So the good thing is if we capture one region one, two, three, these three selected, we can pick any other region to go to compare them, saying, hey, which region have the same keywords or same semantics? Here we can we make our model highly expandable because you can always in, incorporate very advanced natural language processing to identify, to define which is similar. Or for, yes, for that is, for example, we pick some region, then we can identify other regions which is similar to these selected regions. And we also come up with something called interactive key, keyword tree because let's say if, if we want to find the places for the co-occurrence of keywords, tornado rebuild and tree, I, I will pick these three, uh, three. Then these three, then immediately go, they go to grab. Yeah, there is a, there, these are two like, a, 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 how to say that? semantic data points by people's narrative, they are kind of the, uh, similar because the, here the similar is only keywords are same. See? So they, they have show the same keyword. But as I said, we can use more advanced natural language processing skills. You, can, you will find more similarity or the, we can also add the levels of similarity into that. And, uh, uh, things is a location based uh, uh, analytics. We certainly can bring in the Google. The, the, I mean, when we talk about the, the certain locations from our trips, we can bring in the Google, Google, uh, Google Map, Google, Google Street View, then we can compare. So, what we uh, allow the, we, we, we can compare, say, uh, what uh, it's a same, similar or the difference. This, this will be especially useful is when there is a for after the disaster, because uh, if we don't know what it looks like before disaster, we have to use a Google Street View as a baseline. Uh, for that, I will show some key studies. In some we're going to need to, to wrap up um, okay. in just okay. a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a quick case study, and we work with a uh, uh, police department on for the drug abuse. And these are trips by the police car. So they, they came in and talk about the neighborhoods. See, now we have the, the uh, I mean, the, uh, the, the keyword drug for police, they are in background is blue, and we have community members, the uh, green counters. And the ex offender, they also talk about the drug. Uh, relevant keywords associated with the location, they are in brown. And with drug related code data, that's a red issue. Uh, hues. So there's a four different colors that allow us to look into the any inconsistency. And we we further develop our tool allow you to change your uh, transcript. Sometimes you might feel regret that I shouldn't see this. So I want to change. So you have the chance to change your scene here. And we have more advanced than that image uh, processing allow you to link the data together. So a quick conclusion is it will en enable the can Factorize the spatial insights, uh, like Mabel Kwan come up as an uncertain geographical context problem, and we have emotional landscape. This tool can help to make it, it uh, verify that. And uh, we, as I said, all these here can be further improved because we make it an open framework to allow you to plug in. What's a really interesting thing is because we take other people's voice. So can we see if the voice the emotion will be reflected by your voice. Can we just judge your voice instead of looking at what you see? So what's uh, similarity or relevance? And definitely, because when we look more detail into that, uh, there's uh, one thing we need uh, is worthy research, is uh, how to adjust various generality and ethical consideration. Thank you, and uh, there are some references.